All right, another traumatizing event for both Bitcoin and the S&P 500. Let's talk about it. So let's start off with some new economic data and then let's dive into the DXY, S&P 500 and Bitcoin charts. And we'll wrap up the video talking about VIX and the options market. So uh, the most important economic data that came out today was from the US manufacturing PMI, uh, which rose to 46.8% in January. Now, uh, for all of these pieces of economic data that we're going to be looking at today, uh, basically, a higher than forecast reading for all three of these is going to be typically bullish for the US dollar. Now, uh, if we do come over to once again, the PMI, this is the most important one that came out today, forecast to be at 46%, previously at 46.2%. So they were expecting a drop, which is bearish for the dollar. And this actually came up to 46.8%, very bullish for the DXY. DXY did manage to have a strong breakout of this uh, diamond bottom formation. It has thrown back to the support. We'll keep you up to date on how this plays out. Not the most important pattern that and it is on the lower time frames. Nonetheless, uh, we have had a lot of economic data coming out today supportive of a move back up for the DXY. Also, the US S&P 500 Global Composite uh, PMI. This was previously at 45%, pushed up to 46.6%, generally bullish for the dollar. And then coming over to US Services PMI. Uh, once again, a higher than forecast reading is bullish for the dollar. This came in at 46.6%, forecast at 45% and previously at 44.7%. So, you know, all in all, these are just tidbits of economic data before our next major FOMC meeting, which is still eight days away. This is going to be the most important one, of course. Uh, I'm personally believing that we're probably going to have another 50 basis point increase. The Fed themselves has said uh, many, many times in the past week or so that we need to see, literally from their words exactly, we need to see far more data coming in to show us that inflation is coming down before we start considering a pivot into lower basis point increases like 25 basis points. I'm also going to make a video potentially a little bit later today, if not tomorrow, if I have time, uh, talking about a couple of leading indicators for inflation, copper futures, live cattle, uh, looking at a couple of futures for eggs, uh, all of that good stuff, you know, electricity, blah, blah, blah. Uh, a lot of the leading indicators for inflation are starting to push back up. China economy is reopening. This is increasing China demand coming into direct conflict with the US, which is, of course, not going to be good for your equity markets or commodity prices. Uh, equity markets are likely to come down with this. Uh, commodity prices are likely to go back up. Uh, DXY will probably lollygag, uh, but with that being said, looking at the DXY at this moment in time, uh, like we said on the four hour time frame, one hour time frame, we're very, very much trying to push out to the upside of this diamond pattern. Uh, nothing can be celebrated at this moment in time. We've talked about this many, many times on the channel, how typically when you have these diamond bottom formations, a lot of the time you form this in a lower time frame, you have a bit you have a push out of the diamond bottom and then you come right back into it and retest the floor before breaking out so a lot of the time if you do draw a diamond pattern you'll notice that the right line of attack uh depending on how you draw it can be very very aggressive so often we do break out of this and form something like this which is a you know more aggressive more not more aggressive sorry uh, it's a larger diamond pattern that we're just currently sitting and you can also see the same for the floor here there would have been an argument to be made that you could draw it like this you know we came and retested it and broke down uh, then you know we broke up to the upside so these diamond patterns often end up uh, expanding uh, nonetheless we keep it something like this i'll keep you up to date over on twitter uh, on how this starts to play out if we do come over to the daily time frame uh looking at this blue line of support right here we are at a very very crucial level if i do remove all of this data you can see, you know, this area right here is where we're currently holding back from March 2020 when we had that, you know, can't say the name of what it is over on YouTube, but, you know, the stock market started crashing, Bitcoin started crashing, the DXY took a huge run to the upside, and we're currently retesting this very, very key level. Of course, if we do start breaking beneath uh, approximately 101.9, it is going to be extremely worrying for the DXY, uh, not necessarily government bonds, which will uh, likely still push up a little bit higher, uh, which is, you know, a video that I do plan on getting out in the immediate short term or so. Uh, but nonetheless, we are in a huge, huge support level for the DXY right now. So I will keep you up to date on this for the S&P 500. We quite recently made a video talking about how liquidity conditions had started to top out and turn down around about this area. And you can see 
we do come over to the charts right now with this most recent push up in the past one two three days you can see that we are once again at this, huge, at this huge red trend line, this macro downtrend that has been in play throughout the entirety of the bear market. We also talked about, you know, macro timeframes, huge, huge bear flag, uh, lower timeframes, mid timeframes on the daily. You can see we've broken down and we're still in this, you know, smaller bear flag at this moment in time. We talked about four hour time frame, how there was a price gap right here. We've broken above this like we talked about in the most recent video. We just didn't get rid of the... Uh, didn't get rid of this, uh, what's it called, uh, blue box indicating that there is a gap down here. So really the only other price gap I've got my eyes on right now is all the way down here. We filled this one, we broke back up and filled this one. So, you know, while we were on a rally to the upside, we formed a price gap to the downside, we came back down. And while we were on the way back down, we formed another price gap, we came down, filled this price gap. Uh, on the way back up to the upside before, in my opinion, breaking back down, as you can still see, you know, zooming out, S&P 500 is very much still in a very, very linear downtrend. So, you know, when you start to see Bitcoin pushing up uh, and, you know, pushing up from this high, this is a key sign, in my opinion, that this is a fake rally. We'll also talk about, you know, another opinion on a fake rally if we look at the options market in just one second. But for the S&P 500, since the most recent high up here at 4,100, we've obviously broken down, filled this price gap, and we're currently stuck uh, within this golden ratio right here. You know, the 786 Fibonacci, 618 and 0.5. Uh, typically, if you're looking at the you know golden fib, you're looking at the 618. Uh, but in my opinion, you know, I always highlight these three boxes as golden because the 0.5, 618, 786 Fibonacci, these are all very, very important. If you want to be bullish, you will need to break above this trend line. You will need to have a successful flip of 4,030 for the S&P 500, uh, right now I do see us getting stuck at the 786 Fibonacci, stuck underneath the bear flag resistance. We filled a price gap and now in my opinion, it looks like we should be pushing down to the other price gap down here, 3,600. If we take a price grab of how far away this is until we fill the price gap, literally almost exactly on the head with a 10% move back down to the downside. Uh, with the most recent bearish economic data that has come out. Obviously, if we come over to the one hour time frame for the S&P 500, uh, there were a few other, you know, data points, economic data that came out a little bit earlier than these. And there are also, you know, some other, if we come over to the economic calendar, uh, there were also, you know, some other bearish events that did come over. Uh, if you are coming over to investing.com and looking at the economic calendar, there were few other readings which came in, you know, supportive of a DXY move back up uh, and also bearish equity markets in general. But these three are the most important ones that I have disclosed with you. Uh, coming over to Bitcoin, or if we look at the S&P 500 quick, you can see that in the past few hours, we have been moving back down as we have once again come into contact with this macro resistance on the weekly time frame. Once again, huge red line downtrending. Uh, for Bitcoin, though, let's look at the one hour time frame. We zoom in. Since a lot of this data came in this morning, we have started breaking down from about 23,100. We haven't had a big move down yet, but if we do come over to the daily time frame, uh, you can see that we are, you know, kind of lollygagging right on this trend line. As I did talk about in my most recent video, huge week for Bitcoin, also a huge week for the S&P 500. And of course, with the FOMC meeting coming out in eight days, really the next eight days are going to be extremely important for all of these markets. But for Bitcoin, once again, like we talked about in the previous video, keep your eyes on 22,700. If we do close above 22,700, it's likely we have another push up into the FOMC before breaking back down. However, if we do close beneath 22,700 on the weekly candle, as soon as we get a weekly candle body close, if we get a weekly candle body close beneath this level, I will be looking for active shorts on KDA, Solana, Gala, all the other altcoins that we do cover on the channel. For right now, no need to rush into things. I'm looking at how the weekly candle body close pans out for Bitcoin. A lot of the oscillators that we've been looking at on the channel, you know, money flow index, squeeze momentum indicator, stock RSI, they are all extremely overextended. MFI right now still sitting around about 86 to 87, basically uh, low 87. So that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about today. However, there's one final thing that I want to wrap up on, and that is what is happening in the VIX and the options market. So of course, you know, the S&P 500 rallied back up to resistance and we have been pushing up to the upside uh, quite recently. 
Obviously, in the higher time frames, nothing has changed. We are once again, you know, still at this resistance level. However, while the S&P 500 has been pushing up, while Bitcoin has been pushing up, but more specifically the S&P 500, because we'll be looking at the options market. If we do come over to the VIX, you know, once again, equity markets are up, but the VIX is still, you know, holding or, you know, just about holding, sitting in this huge, huge support region. And it doesn't really look like the VIX wants to break down further to the downside. So, you know, the VIX is holding strong and the VIX isn't really breaking beneath these lows or these lows or these lows. However, the S&P 500 is pushing up. So what does this tell us? Well, this basically tells you the options traders are buying protection against the move up for the S&P 500. So, you know, your smart money is currently sitting on the sidelines for your equity markets, for your options traders, they're sitting on the sidelines buying protection. Uh, VIX is not breaking down, S&P 500 is breaking up. That is a divergence and that is extremely bearish. So, you know, we've looked at, um, you know, what's happening in the options market. Smart traders are buying protection. And of course, if the S&P 500 is moving up and the VIX isn't really breaking down, that is a telltale sign that this is a fake rally led by the retail and earnings season. And of course, you know, on this channel as well, which I will make a separate video about, we do frequently cover Bitcoin and Bitcoin as well. You know, Bitcoin is pushing up. In fact, you can see, you know, for Bitcoin, we've actually pushed up above this high. Uh, however, for the S&P 500, you know, we're still clearly in a very, very linear downtrend. Now, people have been ask asking me because of this, you know, the S&P 500 has been making lower lows, uh, but Bitcoin is pushing up from this high. And people have been asking and saying to me, you know, is Bitcoin derailing from the S&P 500? I get asked this question quite a lot. Uh, a lot of the time on the daily time frame, the answer is no. A lot of the time on the daily time frame, these diverge for a very short period in time. They do not track 100%. They track with about 85% correlation. If I show you some key points over here, you can see Bitcoin had its top on the 11th of December. And it wasn't until the 22nd of January that the S&P 500 topped out. People are probably wondering back here, you know, has Bitcoin finally decoupled from the S&P 500? And of course, you know, the macro moves were still in play. Bitcoin bottomed one week before the S&P over here. Bitcoin and the S&P topped out at the same time over here. However, Bitcoin topped out one week before the S&P over here. Uh, Bitcoin topped out one week before the S&P over here. The SM and Bitcoin bottomed one, two, three, four, five, six weeks before the S&P over here. Then we pushed up. Bitcoin made its first top. The S&P and it started breaking down to the downside. The S&P just lollygagged and then continued to break back up. Uh, from then, Bitcoin bottomed one week after the S&P and then Bitcoin topped out a whole one, two, three, four, five, six weeks before the S&P 500. Once again, another time where people would have been wondering, let's probably make the S&P a different color, we'll make it blue. Another time where people were probably wondering, has Bitcoin finally decoupled? And of course not. The macro moves come back down, Bitcoin bottoms and starts pushing up. While the S&P 500 continues breaking down, people are wondering here, has Bitcoin decoupled? Bitcoin moves up for one, two, three, four, five, six weeks, uh, seven, eight weeks ahead of the S&P. Uh, and, you know, once again, the S&P only started pushing up after like the sixth week. There's a lot of times where these don't track exactly. Bitcoin topped out here, S&P 500 topped out one week before, uh, S&P 500 topped out here, Bitcoin topped out the week after. And then you can see something interesting. The S&P bottomed over here on the 10th and started rallying up to the upside. But Bitcoin rallied for, you know, a few weeks or so. And you can see this low over on the S&P 500. Uh, the S&P 500 broke down for a week. Bitcoin pushed up further. Then the S&P 500 rallied for one, two, three, four weeks. And Bitcoin broke down into new lows during this time. If you're looking at what happens day to day, there's going to be a lot of times where you might be wondering, you know, hey, is Bitcoin finally diverged from the S&P? If you're looking at the weekly time frame and, you know, you're giving it a little bit of leniency, a couple of data candles apart, you will notice that these do follow with about 85% uh, likelihood. So with this, VIX is not breaking down, but the S&P 500 is breaking up. That's a sign that smart money and options traders are buying protection against a move to the upside. That's a sign that this is a fake rally. You look at what smart money is doing on Bitcoin, which I will make a separate video about. They are not buying. That is a sign that this is a fake rally. S&P 500 is still at resistance and people are being bullish. That is a sign that there is greed in the markets and that this is a fake rally. You come over to you know the S&P 500 and Bitcoin and Bitcoin 
if we remove this very quickly, Bitcoin is pushing up from its most recent low, making a higher low in the mid to lower time frames. But the S&P 500 is still making lower lows and lower highs. That is another sign that when the S&P does get rejected and starts moving back down to the downside, that Bitcoin will once again follow. So, you know, once again, a lot of people ask me this, Bitcoin is not diverging from the S&P 500. And yes, I do still believe that this is a fake rally. We'll keep an eye on the weekly candle body close once again, 22,700. If Bitcoin closes beneath it, I will be shorting quite a few different coins. But for today, my friends, that's all I've got. If you enjoy the content, let me know down below by leaving a like and a comment share the videos with your friends and if you do want more of my post charts memes economic data when it does come out be sure to head over to my twitter at 618 underscore cowboy join the discord if you haven't already if you go on my youtube and click on the about section you can see all of my official links including twitter discord instagram and the merch store are all linked down below but for today my friends that's all i've got it's been your boy cowboy trades i'm out peace